Geometry Dash has a lot of levels. Outside of the 30 plus levels that the main developer Robotor created, majority of the levels comes from other players and creators. In order to upload your own level in this game, you have to put one together using this game's level editor and beat the whole level without dying once. If the level has been beaten, you are now able to upload it and share it with other players. If your level has high enough quality, it might even catch the attention of the developer of the game, Robtop. The reason this is relevant is because he might feel like the level is good enough to be given a star rating. This is something a lot of creators in the game desires to have because it gives player a deeper reason to play your level, allowing them to gather collectibles to boost their own player account by playing the level you made. Of course, some levels have more impact than others, and they are remembered and recognized for their accomplishment. There are some pretty good examples of creators that have released some great levels such as Funny Game, Sender Game, Sir Punch, Nascub, and more. But some of the most popular levels in this game are those that are considered the hardest to beat. Examples would be Cataclysm, Bloodbath, Artificial Ascent, Yatagarasu, Zodiac, Limbo, and more. One of the so-called hardest levels to beat in the game that I have brought up in videos previously is a level called Element 111 RG by the creator Dark X. On the surface, this level name sounds like absolute gibberish, and given that there are other hardest levels much like it, it begs the question what makes this level so special. There are many levels like it too, an old impossible garbage level designed to essentially break your soul with some of the most garbage designs you will have ever seen in a game. Nothing about that makes the level in itself very special, yes. But unlike the majority of these levels, this seemingly impossible level for one reason or another was rated. A level being rated implies that Robtop, the developer of the game himself, approved of this level, giving it stars for players to collect. This would also mean that Robtop viewed this as a level possible for players to beat. Now to be fair, at the time the idea of cheating when uploading levels wasn't a thought that was considered much in the community and Robtop was no exception. But there are two things that we know about our dear Robtop. One, Robtop usually doesn't play through the entire levels that he rates, meaning he probably didn't see how murderously difficult this level was. And two, Robtop understandably has a soft spot for levels using new content that he releases. For some of you, this might sound alien to you because you've perhaps been around for the 2.1 update only. But if you want to get a new rated level when a new update comes out, start using the new features at home because that will motivate Robtop to want to rate a level more. Element 111RG was such an example. The sixth major update of the game had come out fairly recently. 1.6 released on the 25th of March 2014, which introduced some of these blocks you see here. Element 111RG was released 13 days after the update on the 7th of April 2014, and the beginning of the level had these blocks immediately showcased, which is probably the only part of the level that Robtop truly played. Seeing the beginning of this was enough for Robtop, he gave the level a simple rate and ignored the fact that was obvious to everyone else who played it. The level was one of the most impossible brutal garbage levels that the game ever had to experience, creating such an infamous legacy that any other incredibly difficult level was not even close to the difficulty of this pile of crap. Wait, 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 so if we know the mystery behind this was just being an essentially impossible level, what makes it so special? Who the hell is Dark X? And why is this level called something as obscure as Element 111RG? Okay, let's back up a bit. Before Geometry Dash had even come out, going all the way back to 1999, which was the year that Neighbor was released to the South Korean public. If you've never heard of this before, Neighbor is a South Korean online platform operated by the Neighbor Corporation. It debuted on the 2nd of June 1999 as the first web portal in South Korea to develop and use its own search engine. It was also the world's first operator to introduce the comprehensive search feature, which compiles search results from various categories and presents them in a single page. In simpler English, this online platform provided with an actual search engine before Google themselves. As such, it became the most popular search engine in South Korea, and as of September 2017, the neighbor search engine handled 74.7% .7 of all web searches in the country. More than 25 million Koreans have Neighbor as the start page of their default browser, and the mobile application has 28 million daily visitors. And in 2007, one of its users named Mtrules would begin to play the Super Mario series. He joined a Korean Super Mario World community on the cafe website Neighbor. Over the next five years, this user would spend time improving on the Mario games across a range of consoles such as Wii, DS, and on the PC. During this time, Mtrolls would be spending time using the external developer tool called Lunar Magic, creating custom Mario maps and ROM hacks. 
Some of the private ROM hacks created by him were given a variety of different names, such as Mario Titles Rules, Ready Mario, Jest Mario, and The Puzzle Road. In 2012, mTrolls stated that he had begun making The Puzzle Road 2, set to be harder than the prequel, and would set about creating it with his increased level of skill with Lunar Magic. If you decided to play these ROM hacks, you would find that the difficulty of them were downright incomprehensible. They were by design made to be near impossible, but still humanly possible if someone attempted to get far. Most of the time. Which paints a rather foreboding picture for what the story will entail. Now you may wonder what a story about someone playing Mario ROM hacks has anything to do with Geometry Dash. As it turns out, Mtrolls is none other than Dark X himself, the creator of Element 111RG. His occupation before Geometry Dash had even come out was already perfectly clear in a different game. Back then, this is what Dark X was doing with Super Mario games. Fast forward two years later, back in early 2014, a Korean player named Arco was one of the many users on the Korean Geometry Dash neighbor forum, Geometry World. This was the very first large Geometry Dash community founded by Snow back on the 24th of October 2013. During the large activity of that community, Arco had an idea. He wanted to create a level series based off the elements of the periodic table, and as such, started off with the first element, Hydrogen, and named the level as such. On the 25th of February 2014, Arco posted the first preview on Geometry World, showcasing parts of the level. But a few weeks into development, Arco came to the realization that the scope of the project was so immense that he would need some help. So he came up with the idea to host a community project and he requested the community to join him in making this series of levels. On the 17th of March 2014, Arco would make an announcement post on Geometry World requesting users to join him in making Elements levels. Many users requested to join in helping Arco in his project, one of which was Darkex himself, but we'll get into him later. Each level in this series was going to represent each individual element, so by Arco's request, the levels would have three parts to their name. The name would begin with element, to signify that the level was part of the element series. Afterwards, they would add the atomic number of the designated element, followed by the symbol of the element. So for example, the first level in this series would be oriented around the first element, hydrogen. As such, the name for this level would be element 1H. The next level will be oriented around the element helium, hence element 2HE. Next level after that, lithium, element 3Li, and so on. If you've already counted or you know the periodic table, this would be a massive project of a total of 118 levels. Arco also arranged the series to be categorized into 12 sub-series, with the first levels from 1 to 10 being given the nickname Element Series 1, the next 10 levels after that Element Series 2, and so on, all the way up to Element Series 12, and in the series off with the levels from 111 to 118. This was to signify the difficulty rating of the element level, going from easiest to hardest with the 12th being the hardest. There were no requests for quality control, you were free to do exactly as you wished with the levels you chose to build. If you were successfully assigned to the team, you will be given a total of 5 levels in the series to build on your own. It was an incredibly big project, but Arco was ambitious and eager, so he requested anyone who wanted to join if they wished to help him build these levels. And on the 13th of April 2014, Arco announced on Geometry World that he had every creator that was required to complete the series. Everyone had a total of 5 separate levels to make in the series, with the exception of the final creator who had to make 8 of them. The only requirement from the creators was to make at least one of the five designated levels into an auto level, which meant that it was a level that would be completed without any player input. Two of the creators in the series, Megadir and Minus, has some popular examples of Arco's request being fulfilled. However, fast forward to 2022 and I can tell you that this project did not end up finishing. By only including the official levels that Arco proved to be part of the series, they did not even finish half of the maps they set out to make. Through research, as of the 19th of October 2022, the number of documented element levels recorded to be part of the series was 27 out of 118 levels. And that is me being charitable because some of these levels were never finished or even put into proper production. Eight of these levels were also deleted at one point. You cannot find or play them anymore except for some poor attempts at restoring them on a few select accounts. To say that the project flopped would be an understatement, barely 20% of what they set out to do was actually finished. But what did end up finishing was mostly of good quality at the time. Most of the levels that survived ended up being rated and some of these levels can still be played and seen rated today. But as hinted at the beginning of this video, what we are going to be focusing on is one of the deleted element levels, which of course is element 111RG. 
Also, from this point forward, I'm going to use an acronym to refer to this level because spelling this name out this often is a pain in the ass. So I'll be referring to the level as RG. From what can be seen from Arco's list of creators, it doesn't appear as if the name listed to make 111 to 118 is Dark X at all. You will be right in assuming that because even when translated, this name doesn't mean that at all. His username on Geometry World was not Dark X, but these Korean letters, when properly translated into English, meant foldering. Dark X was his main username in game, which is how we'll refer to him in the video since it is both easier to say and easier to remember. The thing about Dark X though is that he's pretty much just as mysterious as the level itself, if not more so. There are many unique things surrounding this creator that not many others before him or even after him did. The first post Dark X made on Geometry World showed a pretty surprising level of vocabulary compared to everyone else surrounding him. He talks about fixes for the Geometry World forum that he was displeased with and some of the words he uses are fairly complicated, such as conceit, exalting, dimensionality, compromise, sanctions, and more. A very formal way of speaking, especially considering he was probably not at an adult age yet. Up until his infamous level was to be released, there wasn't a whole lot in his catalog of finished levels either. The only documented remnant of a previous Dark X level is this, Theory of Clutter, which was only proven in October 2022 to actually be a level he made. He had no indication of level building experience or anything suggesting that he was an incredible player. Yet despite that, he carried a surprisingly in-depth knowledge on how difficult gameplay in particular seemed to work. This was especially reflected in all the different gimmicks that he built in Theory of Clutter and Element 111RG. The way Dark X built gameplay was just... odd. He created things that seemed to be very elaborate on the surface, yet when put into execution, it was completely pointless. Theory of Clutter is definitely the best example out of the two levels to showcase this odd creative method, showing multiple sections designed for seemingly no reason, since you can very easily just skip doing anything or just jump over it all. Another interesting concept that Dark X did can be seen by checking the level description of RG. There are a number of different things written here. As established previously, Element Series 12 is clear what that means, as does Rowan Genum, which is the full name of the 111th element. But what about the other two sentences? Well, the ultimate time statement ended up being a reference to the level's song, Time Machine, and that according to Dark X, this was the ultimate level for that song. Now how do we know that? Well, two reasons. The first proof that was found involved one of Dark X's posts on Geometry World. On the 26th of March 2014, Dark X created a post talking about how the new update extended the maximum amount of objects in a level from 6,000 to 8,000 objects. He demonstrated this with an image showing the new maximum amount. But what is particularly curious is the level part being seen on this image. Now it can be very safely assumed that this is a ship part because at the time, it was the only game mode existing in the game that allowed you to make these kinds of movements. But visually, this part is absolutely insane and it seemed very appropriate that this was RG. Considering that the level Dark X was showing off already had well over 5,800 objects, Dark X would release RG 11 days later and that the level part looks brutally difficult, it very likely was the level. In this image, there is also a detail that can be seen hidden in plain sight. These yellow lines going from top to bottom on multiple parts of the section. These are BPM lines. The reason they are relevant here is because they are manually arranged by RobTop to a specific song. Before the game had the ability to use custom songs from Newgrounds, for every new song that was added into the game, each song was given specifically arranged BPM lines to help creators figure out how to sync their level. These all look different depending on what song is used, so by simple puzzle matching, it can be established which song is used in this level. The only song that remotely matched the order of BPM lines seen in this image was Time Machine, hence the confirmation we needed. Now obviously, this could still be treated as speculative since it is an actual proof that what has just been said means that this is the level or that the phrase the ultimate time refers to the song. But in case that this isn't enough evidence for you, the second proof should convince you. In recent time, Restoration Union has learned how to data mine existing save files. Now you might think, how would that possibly help here? Well, dependent on the contents of the save file, there is something called a saved levels folder, which is where a player can keep levels downloaded locally on their device, so that they would not need internet connection to play user levels if they so desired. A GD account's save file keeps this information saved on the account. As it turns out, the developer RobTop when writing the code for when saving an account decided to include the levels stored in the saved levels folder in the save file. This level information includes the level's name, level's ID, the level's song, and the user account of who uploaded the level. And after a long session of collecting save files through people submitting them into a Twitter post or to Restoration Union themselves, we finally found a save file that contained RG, officially confirming the song to be Time Machine. The ultimate level 3 made the least amount of sense for a long time, 
An original theory for what this statement implied was that this was Dark X's third level he posted, and since there were no other leads to what it could mean, that theory stuck around for a while. That was until a discovery was found, where Dark X posted a comment on a Geometry World post by Arco, saying he managed to get 6% on RG. The last comment in this post is by Dark X, and it is a pretty lengthy comment, but what is particularly interesting is the level 3 to 4 part of the comment. When this comment is properly translated, it reads out the following. Haha, <laughs> originally the purpose of making the level was to make same difficulty level like the Hell series, Hazard Sector, Silent Club, Demon Ness. The current level of Atomic Number series, 111 to 118, and Rowan Genome difficulty is between level 3 and 4. From what Dark X is describing in his comments, the level 3 statement appears to be his own personal way of ranking the difficulty of the level. But apparently, there are higher levels of difficulty suggested by him saying that RG is around level 3-ish 4 difficulty, but the level description ends up deciding on level 3. The ultimate level 3 refers to a difficulty ranking that Dark X didn't consider to be at the very top. A level that remained untested for well over 6 to 7 years in difficulty compared to any other rated level in this game's history was according to Dark Egg's only level 3, whereas level 4, and potentially even higher, being what the other Dark X element levels would have offered in the 12th sub-series. But I've clearly hyped up RG and Dark X as a creator long enough. So, let's proceed on to the story of the actual level. Based off the documented findings, RG became the fifth finished element level uploaded by what Arco deemed to be the official team of creators. DarkX uploaded the level on the 7th of April 2014, and took only three days to get rated on the 10th. And as soon as it did, Geometry World had a new massive top 8 to talk about. The same day as the level got rated, the forum went crazy, posting identical messages of the exact same part, which is the beginning of the level here with a very specifically made jump. Everyone went on to repeat the exact same statement. The level was completely insane. Some people even go in as far as calling the creator an absolute lunatic. For a full day, the level's difficulty would not even be beaten in practice mode, and the unnerved version of the level was just impossible for players to get through. It was simply too difficult, whatever it may have been, and in almost every single post about the level, you could see Dark X in the comments sections be very pleased and smug with the reactions he is getting. If not that, he would once more present his surprisingly in-depth knowledge of the game and how to approach these timings everyone are stuck on. It appeared crazy for everyone in the community how someone with only their second level upload being one of the hardest rated levels the game had ever seen and remained as such for many years to come. At the time, no one reached the end. On Geometry World, the furthest players got in an attempt to reach the end in practice mode was 41% and they all gave up there for unknown reasons. No one knew at the time how the full level looked like, since no one could actually see it all for themselves. How is this possible? Was the level speed hacked? Like some older impossible levels before it? Was it perhaps exploited or glitched to be uploaded somehow? Well, literally the next day, on the 11th of April 2014, players found out what was going on. Now, going into the details of how players exactly uploaded old, ridiculously hard or impossible levels is a very long and detailed story to go through, so let's leave that alone. If you want more details on that aspect, have a look at the history of hacking video I made discussing majority of methods and how to do so. But to quickly establish the case of RG, the way the level was released was in hindsight fairly simple. This level was uploaded by utilizing a very clever secret way hidden in plain sight. As a matter of fact, it was available already 3% into the level. For those who haven't seen the level before, let's see if you can spot it here in the beginning with me just playing the normal route. Did you notice anything? Well, if you had a keen eye, you may have noticed that this platform up here was possible to jump on top. However, it didn't seem to benefit to anything because it didn't seem to lead anywhere except towards a massive structure covered in spikes. But as stated, the secret way was hidden in plain sight, and these spikes were the ones hiding it. If the player managed to get up to this platform, all they had to do was make one final jump towards this left side corner without hitting the spike. If you lined up the jump just right, all you had to do was hold the jump button and watch the magic unfold. Literally perfect. If you pull this off, you beat the level. This path would take you all the way to the end with no further obstacles and everything brutally difficult in the level could immediately be interpreted as a complete joke. The first mention of the secret way on Geometry World was posted by Star on the 11th of April and the news spread like wildfire. Everyone began to beat the level using the secret way and got themselves a free demon completed on their account. One of the players that got 41 on the main path of RG in practice mode, Integral, even made a statement on the forum calling Dark X out. 
It pretty much was a statement from Integral and the people who were unhappy with the Brutal difficulty and said that he would be much better creator if he didn't make levels this difficult in the future. As such, Integral suggested to Dark X that if he made the level much easier and closed off the secret way to beat the level legitimately, the decoration would be good enough to justify it as a good level. And Dark X responded, saying that he would make the level easier and block off the secret way. Dark X at the time had already begun building the next element level in his subseries, Element 112CN. But Dark X announced on the 12th of April that his elemental map series upload had been postponed, presumably to try and restore RG to its former glory for its brutal difficulty. During the day, Dark X would spend his time doing what he could to nerf the level and block off the secret way, and then in a day's work, he would be done and release a new, easier version of RG on the 13th of April as stated by GW Unicorn on Geometry World. Now, from here on out, there's going to be some confusion in details because a lot of what was said regarding the level in the upcoming days are mostly just unconfirmed statements. Some of them were never unraveled and have remained a mystery to this day. The first example of this is the nerfed version. Supposedly, the secret way that Star showcased on the 11th was fixed and the level was also nerfed to be easier, as evidenced by what GW Unicorn stated. But apparently, there was a secret way in the level still, considering that Dark X really wasn't good enough for the game to release a level that hard. The location of this new secret way is completely unknown. There is even a post a player made on about where to find the new secret way, since the original one had been blocked off. The players that did know about the location of the secret way had no interest in sharing it, but they evidently kept using it. One of which was Integral himself. Despite the easier version of the players were offered, no one attempted to get through it and stuck to the secret way, which once more had nothing stopping you on the way to the end. As such, the problem continued, and players kept beating the level using a secret way, with the main path still being way too difficult. What this new secret way was has never been found. At this point, you might be wondering, where was Rumpchup during all of this? Wouldn't he be questioning the legitimacy of the level at this point, or be willing to unrate it? Okay, let's back up a few days to right before the level was rated. I did say at the beginning of this video that RG was very likely rated as a result of using the newly released features from the 1.6 update, which yes, this was definitely a contributing fact. But there's one part about Rumpchup's story that is very strange. Early in the morning on the 10th of April, the user Honor made a post on Geometry World. Remember this name, because I will be talking about him a lot later. In this post, he showcased that he had contacted Rumtop through his support email, which at the time was a reasonable thing to do, because the game was not that big yet. It is unsure what the full email said, but it is assumed that Honor asked Rumtop to rate RG, since the level had no secret way. Which of course was a lie, but the GW community did not know this yet. But Robtop's response to this email was rather peculiar. It read as the following. There was a way that could be abused that I blocked. Set as demon. Please do not spam send emails. Best, Robert. Now, keep in mind that this statement was made on the 10th of April 2014, and this is very likely what gave the final push for RG to be rated in the first place. But given that the GW community would not find a secret way until a day later, what is Robtop referring to here? What path needed to be blocked? If we assume that this was a secret way he blocked off, why would Robtop consciously choose to rate this level if he found a secret way? If there were two secret ways in the level for some reason, that wouldn't make much more sense either. If Dark X was trying to hide the fact that he beat the level with a secret way, why would you double the chances of someone finding it? Not only that, but the idea of Robtop going into a useless level to change something himself is practically unheard of. There are no documented cases before this point where Robtop himself edited a level to make sure it was appropriate for a raid. If he went into the level to block out a path, did he not notice the rest of the level's insane difficulty? For those part of the GD community that know very well how integrated hacking has become in the community, you have to remember that this is back in 2014. The idea of cheating when uploading a level was still relatively unheard of, and Robtop would be very upset to see you hacking or cheating in order to upload or beat a level. There is even a comment from Robtop himself in the RG comment section saying, once more that there was a path that could be abused but he blocked it. What this actually means though is still a mystery, and the only one who could potentially answer this question is Robtop himself, because there are no indications of what he's actually talking about. I do wish I had an explanation for what this actually means, but I unfortunately don't. This remains a mystery to this day.
Now, going back to the level, RG was updated to be easier, the first secret way was blocked off, and the new one appeared somewhere so nothing was resolved, with ensuring it was legitimately beaten. Given all the controversy that had been surrounding Dark Kings for these past 4 days, Arco decided to kick the creator off the team in an effort to push for legitimately released levels. But Arco was not particularly happy doing that, as he still wanted levels this brutally difficult on the 12th sub-series. So he once more requested the Geometry World Forum for help on the 14th of April, and asking if two creators were willing to take Dark Kings' place in creating the remaining element levels from 112 to 118. Arco announced two days later the creators who took Darkex's spot were Sundal and Palin. Sundal was given 112 to 115 and Palin was given 116 to 118. And with that, Arco and his team moved on to continue making element levels and Darkex was left on his own. And for those that wonder, no, these two creators did not end up releasing any of the levels they were assigned to make. Today in 2022, me and others were even fortunate enough to get in contact with one of these creators, Palin. But as we had a word with him, he stated that while he had begun making one level, which apparently was element 115MC, nothing ever came out of it. And since Sundal very likely did nothing either, RG ended up being the only official contribution to the 12th subcategory of the element series. One thing worth mentioning at this point was that the day prior to Arco's announcement of Dark X being kicked, on the 13th of April 2014, Dark X would make his final post on the Geometry World Forum. The title of the post when translated into English said, Let's ignore the views. It was followed by two sentences that gave pretty blunt statements. When translated, it reads the following. It'll stop one day, because there is no reason to go on. It doesn't affect us anyway, so let's ignore it. Now it is a bit unclear what he actually meant here, but it is assumed to relate to the backlash he got from uploading a level this difficult without legitimately beating it. Back in the early days of the game, the idea of releasing a very difficult level was seen as a negative. You would be getting dislikes on the level if a player could not beat a level easily or get stuck on something they didn't understand. Combine that with players finding out you have uploaded a really hard level illegitimately and players would go out of their way to essentially destroy you with backlash and criticism. Dark X's final post is very likely in reference to how the community behaved regarding this subject. This ended up being the final trace Dark X left to the Geometry Dash community, which gives his departure a bit of a sour ending. With RG only being played for the free demon ever since it was found, it wouldn't take long until Robta finally noticed what was going on with the level. As such, the next day on the 15th of April 2014, Super SNSD would finally make a new mention of RG after his two posts regarding the insane difficulty. The title when translated into English read out as 111RG completion that I deliberately didn't upload. It presents one image showing off RG being unrated, alongside with its user Dark X having been changed to unknown as a creator of the level. Super SNSD himself stated that he did not want to show off this level as an achievement because of the fact that he beat it with a secret way, much like everyone else. Quoting Super SNSD regarding Dark X himself, I was thinking they were nothing short of a clown. Thanks for the stars, but don't brag about releasing a hat level and putting secret ways in it. Now, that would be the general story for this level. After this, Dark X disappears from the Geometry World community, removing his personal blog on Neighbor to never return to this game. For some of you, that might be where the story ends. The level was unrated and forgotten about, and the creator abandoned the game as soon as the level lost its rate. But it's actually not quite where the story ends with this level. Pay attention because this is where the story and details for this level start to become really strange and interesting. As I mentioned before, this was a level that was deemed the hardest demon in the game when it came out. There are well over 35 levels that have at one point been deemed as the hardest demon at the time by a decent chunk of players. But there's one thing that RG in particular is unique compared to every other level of its kind. It's gone. Without a trace. At some point the level had disappeared, been deleted from the servers. There is a post on Geometry World later in August 2014 talking about RG and how the level has mysteriously vanished. Even Dark Hex's older level, Theria Clutter, was nowhere to be found anymore, although it is unconfirmed if that level was deleted then or later. But yes, this ridiculously hard level with its infamous difficulty that brought up for some strange reason decided to rate was lost forever with barely any traces of its existence. So, back in early 2019, when I became really invested in this level's story, I decided to go research to try and find out if I could find the remnants of the level or even find if the level was still out there. What I did not know though was that this single decision would create years of frustration, desperation and pure hatred for the convenient problems every single time I was asked about if the level had been found. I felt the need every single time to go through the whole rigmarole of bullshit that me and others have endured as if I was an 80 year old pensioner. 
Now, I'm not going to discuss exactly what I did the entire process because that would mean going through details that me and others know today are incorrect, which would just create confusion in this video. But I will, however, establish a timeline of events that were found and will be relevant eventually. So what can currently be established on this timeline? Well, let's start from the beginning. Dark X joins the official team for the Element series on the 17th of March 2014, and it can be safely assumed that this is when RG was truly being made. Dark X teased the existence of this level unintentionally on the 26th of March 2014 by showcasing a ship section in a random part of the level. Then finally, on the 7th of April, RG was released and the level was then rated three days later. It would only take a day after the level was rated that on the 11th of April, the secret way was found by other players and they would chastise him for not uploading a level legitimately. On the 13th, Dark X would release the nerfed update that would make the main path easier and block off the secret way, but then open up another one somewhere else. Players kept using the secret ways to beat the level, and Dark X would end up leaving the Geometry World community entirely by making his final post on the forum the same day. With the secret way still being used by everyone, the level was unrated on the 15th of April, and the level was also confirmed to be removed by Orca on the 15th of August that same year. Through some extensive research, there's another aspect that could be confirmed and listed here. One aspect that was pretty important to figure out was when RG was officially deleted. Now this might seem like a random fact to figure out, and I'll go through in more detail why this was so important later, but for now, just accept that we need this information. We know that on a rough estimate, the level was uploaded between 7th of April and 15th of April 2014, and since there is no definitive way of knowing when this level was deleted, it was assumed that at an unknown point, after the 15th of April, the level was officially gone. A four month long estimate between 15th of April to 15th of August 2014 is still pretty big, but there are ways to make this estimate a lot smaller by looking into one detail. Back in the old versions of the game, for some of these versions it was impossible as a player to remove and upload a level. That feature did not exist yet, which sounds pretty brain dead all things considered, but that was how the game used to be. When RG was uploaded in the 1.6 update, this feature still didn't exist. And what this meant is that even if Dark X wanted to, he could not remove his levels from the servers. The only one who could do that was Robtop himself. That, however, was until the next update came out, the 1.7 update, where the option to delete your uploaded levels was finally added. This update came out on the 21st of May 2014, which immediately shortens the gap for when the level was potentially removed, with well over a month. There are a couple of additional aspects that would theoretically allow us to decrease the gap even further, but they can only be treated as speculative facts without proper foundation. As such, we can add to the timeline that the level was deleted between 21st of May to 15th of August 2014. The new timeline can then be presented as the following. So there we are. We have the general timeline of events presented for RG, and this will become more relevant as the research for finding the level goes on. But for now, let's begin with the basic ideas that popped up in my head first. As established previously, RG was already gone from the servers. Searching for the level today, you will find endless copies, but this was after I had made these old videos before. Back in 2019, you would not find a single level called Element 111 RG. There were no copyables anywhere, no autos uploaded, and as such, the game itself would be completely useless in attempting to find a level. So, outside sources were considered, and immediately, perhaps, there were YouTube videos uploaded showcasing parts of the level. It was 2014 after all, so YouTube had already reached insane levels of popularity. Maybe there would be videos of the level on there, but nope, there was literally nothing. There might be more if you would dig really deep into YouTube, but there is no feature for looking back into old uploaded videos on YouTube. Plus, in today's day and age, it is now filled with people who have attempted to fake themselves finding the real level all over the place, which has only made it more difficult to actually find anything useful, which is just lovely. So, YouTube as a source of research was pretty much abandoned pretty quickly, since it was pretty much unusable. So another method of trying to find a level had to be arranged. The next idea involved the service EveryPlay, which if you haven't heard of this service before, EveryPlay was a free mobile game replay platform that allows you to record your attempts in levels, which in Geometry Dash is seen as a trademark at the end of an attempt or if the level was beaten. EveryPlay was a rather popular feature in other mobile games such as Crossy Road and Drive Ahead with the Geometry Dash being one of the popular examples among them. What this meant is that a ton of Geometry Dash videos are on their database, which could be a collection of anything, and given that this application is integrated into the game and was the main method of recording videos of the game back in 2014, finding RG in that database seems like a decent possibility. But then the reality of the situation set in. My research on finding this level began in January 2019, 
but the AirPlay service discontinued on the 1st of October 2018, and the collection of videos that were never downloaded from the website are now unavailable to access. It is unknown if the AirPlay team ever deleted the catalog of videos, but even if those video files were still accessible, it would be unreasonable to even try to get a hold of them. So the AirPlay method to try and find the level also failed, as it is too late to try and use that database. With the two simplest methods of attempting to find footage of the level thrown out the window, I had to get a little creative. Now some of you may have already been thinking or considering to just continue searching in the Geometry World forum on Neighbor. And yes, this is exactly what me and others began to do. The most obvious search to do first was element 111 RG, but the thing is, this is a Korean forum, meaning English words were usually not seen. So for more consistency, the best term to search for would just be 111 RG. This gives us a total of 20 posts, but unfortunately, none of them yielded anything that we didn't already know. I have already shown you majority of them in the first half of the video when talking about the level story, and most of them just show the first 5% of the level, or the secret way. But there were a couple of unique instances that are worth mentioning, one of which is a post from Bekid9442, or Honor, as he was called back then, on the 11th of April 2014. The title of the post read out as, I can always make an auto, and Honor, or Bekid, ends up describing how he would be able to build an automatic version of any level of your choice. If you sent him images of the level and the details of every color trigger, Bekid would be able to rebuild an automatic version of the level of your choice, assuming you didn't send him useless images like this cluster of color triggers lacking proper information. And who would end up being interested in seeing this done to their level? Well. None other than DarkX himself, of course. DarkX requested Bekid to create an automatic version of RG, and while Bekid seemed to be reluctant to do so, given the way his response was written, he agreed to do it. DarkX followed up with the question, how long will it take? Bekid stated that it would not even take a day to do this, laughing it off. Bekid also requested DarkX to stop messaging him through emails and instead do the more normal thing creating posts which has been shown repeatedly throughout this entire video. And Dark X's response here really speaks a lot of his character regarding RG. He says that no one has beaten RG yet, so he cannot post any pictures. So yeah, the lack of coverage of the level was deliberate. Dark X wanted to keep parts of the level hidden. Now I understand why he did this. He wanted to treat the level as a sort of story that he preferred to not show until it was beaten by someone else. But ignoring the fact that he said this after requesting a different creator to create an automatic version of the level, but with the level being so brutally insane for its time and even today, what did he expect here? That someone somehow was going to beat a level harder than anything else that had been released at the time, which was already completely unbeatable with players' skill level back in 2014. Either way, going back to the conversation that Dark X had with Bikid again, Bikid responds with just saying, fair enough, but continues motioning the statement that using email is very uncomfortable and impractical in today's day and age. So. DarkX finally complies and tells Bikid that he will post the necessary images on his neighbor blog. Now, don't be confused by this terminology, it is just a personal blog prepped for the website neighbor. And before you ask, no, this blog no longer exists and has been deleted probably years ago. Once the images have been uploaded, DarkX will provide a link to Bikid. He finishes his reply by asking once more for reassurance if it will only take a day. This further instates that DarkX really did not want to show any images of the level to anyone. He wanted players to find out how the level looked like the hard way, which clearly no one could. But Kid responds by saying on hindsight, it would probably take around 3 days to finish making this auto, not just one. Around 40 minutes later, Dark X gives the final response of the conversation with, I sent it through DM, please check. This meant that Dark X sent the entire level of screenshots to Bikid in hopes that he would make an automatic version of the level. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You could just contact Bikid through any means necessary since he still has the account in this forum and ask him to scroll all the way back through Dark X's DMs and find images of the entire level which would allow to rebuild the whole level from scratch. Well, for that to be possible, that would imply that Neighbor functioned like Discord. It doesn't function like Discord, it functions like Skype. Now, why does that make such a difference? For anyone who used the Skype before everyone switched to Discord, you would know that an idiotic feature that Skype got was that it would hide the messages between users if the message was old enough. In Skype, messages are stored in the cloud for up to two years. After that, they are deleted. In Neighbor, it is even worse. There, they don't even last for a month. They disappear in not even a month, not even a week, but five days. So yeah, these messages are long gone. They are never going to be found. What could have survived was if the kid saved the images that he got on his phone, but I've never managed to contact a kid. I've tried for a long time and it has just never worked. 
But yeah, long story short, Darkrix supposedly gave images to the kid through his blog in order for the automatic version of RG to be made. However, I'm also putting emphasis on the word supposedly because strangely enough, even with the images sent, it didn't seem to help. Only about two hours later, after Dark X pushed the request, did the kid make a public post called Foldering, calling Dark X out about how making an automated version of RG is near impossible when having to take the images yourself. From what the kid says in this response, some parts are available to build for the auto, but apparently not all of them. It would appear particularly evident that this is the case by the comment from Dark X and Bikid's response to it. As Bikid hoped, Dark X responded to the post by saying, I'll modify it with my computer now, or I'll surely finish it tomorrow. Bikid's answers would suggest that Dark X gave Bikid some images of the level, but not all of them. Dark X very desperately wanted to ensure that RG remained hidden until there was that one player that was finally able to conquer every part in this brutally difficult level. Now the problem with this vision of his was that it would make Bikids' work toward making an automatic version completely unreasonable or even impossible given the skill required to pass the level in just practice mode. But despite the lack of actual encouragement from Dark X to work on making this automatic version, Bikid didn't give up. He did what he could with the material he had to work with and only 30 minutes after the post kid called Dark out, he would upload a video showcasing the progress of the Element 111RG Auto, which was great news. This meant that if kid was showcasing the progress of building the automatic version with videos, parts of the level could be found that way perfectly fine. Look, there it is. A video ready to play for the auto showcase. Perfect. Let's play and find out what it reveals. Oh. Wonderful. The video was incorrectly recorded, only showing the actual end of the auto, which yes, it does reveal one new section, but in terms of actual gameplay it is practically worthless. Just fantastic. What it does show is a specifically designed structure and a ship portal with a mirror portal stacked on top of it. And unfortunately, this is all the Bikid ever showcased publicly of his work in this automatic version. The next day on the 12th of April, Bikid will be showcasing progress on an entirely different level, which if you're curious was the level called Hazard Sector X by Synthic Alpha. In less than three minutes of the post have been uploaded, Darkex would comment to Bikid regarding RG once more. And once more, Darkex is adamant on the idea of not showing the full level to Bikid, but instead encourages Bikid to make up parts on his own instead of actually following what RG had. It begs the question why Darkex even bothered asking Bikid in the first place if all he wanted was an automatic level mimicking what was available to the general community. It could be that Darkex had this idea of the community needing to take part in a joint effort to figuring out what was actually in the level, and then update the knowledge of the level accordingly. There was a very unique approach to this level's mystery. Darkex wanted to ensure the difficulty of this level remained as confusing and vague as possible. He wanted to ensure the players found out on their own, while this idea sounds very interesting on paper, this would also imply that the community was actually interested in trying to play through probably one of the most unique yet garbage creations the game has ever seen. And while the kid initially had motivated towards the level being rated only a couple of days ago, it would appear as if he has finally had enough. The kid responded to Dark X's comment instantly and ended up asking Dark X if he could give up on creating the automatic version of this level, as it was simply too difficult. Dark X never responded to this comment, and we also never saw more of the automatic version. So unfortunately, once more, we hit a dead end. There were a couple more unique mentions of the level in this manner, like how the user GW Unicorn, who was doing custom level reviews at the time, wanted to cover RG showcasing a ton of images, like how he already did with Darkex's level Theory of Clutter. But unfortunately, none of these searches yielded anything. All of them resulted in dead ends with nothing gained. No images, no videos, nothing. So, a new method for trying to find anything about the level had to be established. Given what was said about Dark X and how secret he wanted to keep RG, searching Dark X's account for images of the level definitely would not end up being particularly fruitful. As shown previously though, there was one image that Dark X unintentionally left of the level when he spoke about the 1.6 updates' increase of object count, which is why we even have this ship part in the first place. But as expected, searching for more on his account would prove to be a waste of time. Darkex kept up with the idea of keeping RG hidden, and that aspect from him stayed true even after leaving the Geometry World community for good. At this point, he would end up going back to the Super Mario community again very briefly, 
making three different posts on the 20th of April 2014. In terms of Naver, this is the last remnants of Darkex being on there. There will be no more activity from this point forward, making things additionally difficult. At this point, I was now over 18 months in the research of attempting to find this level. I was getting desperate and in that overwhelming sense of despair and agony of wasting hours and hours trying to find a stupid level, I spent well over 50 hours just looking through post after post after post after post and after fucking post on the Geometry World forums but to no avail. Even after successfully searching through every single image that was posted on the forums, other than the 20% image from Super SNSD shown previously, nothing else will be found on this forum. Geometry World was therefore officially useless. We then went for looking into players that might have still had their old phone and maybe had played RG when the level was still out. No matter who we asked and no matter what player we could think of that might have had the level or played it, did not have the level on their phone or saved anywhere. I then decided to contact Viprin, one of the biggest creators in the entire game, who had direct access to talking to Robtop on Discord. I brought forth the question of whether or not Robtop did backups of his game in the earlier updates, which if he did off the 1.7 update, RG might still be on it. We would probably never ever be given an actual copy of the game's contents from the developer himself, that would just be outrageous to expect, but it would be reassuring to know that it is available in a safe location. But Viprin filled me in on the fact that Robtop only began to do backups of his game more recently in 2017, way after RG was already long gone. With all the methods considered, contacting every single person we could think of who might have had the level on their old phone, looking through every single social media platform with images and videos available. This is where most people would resign themselves to the fact that they aren't going to find this goddamn level. But then, we had a breakthrough. In early October 2022, me and my friends discovered something pretty interesting. By looking at one of the first Geometry World posts by Arco from the 27th of December 2013, there was a certain image posted showcasing a list of Korean names of files and applications. What we see on the center of it is Geometry Dash Light 1.40. Now, don't be confused by the new term Light, that is essentially the free demo version that can be downloaded out of the game. But the interesting part about this is the app being used in this image, which is called Titanium Backup. I had never heard of this app before up until this point, but with a simple Google search, their website describes their application as a backup utility for Android that backs up your system and user applications along with their data on external storage of your choice. You may think, why would this even be relevant here? Someone backs up their current version of the game and now they have it stored elsewhere. Cool. Why is this so special? Well, considering that the app says it backs up the user applications along with their data, this becomes relevant because of how Geometry Dash used to work. For most of 2014, the game did not have a proper account system. An account only existed through the mobile device the player was using. It was defined using the device's UDID, which stands for Unique Device Identifier. Now, this is a bunch of computer and hardware yada yada, so let's leave that alone. But in short, imagine the phone used to play the game on as the save file. It only exists there. And because Geometry Dash has always been a buggy little piece of shit, players losing all of their stats became rather frequent in even such simple matters as updating the game version. So players took matters into their own hands and backupped their save file manually through the usage of Titanium Backup. Doing this, you also backed up the save file, and this is what was really precious. If you remember a bit earlier in the video, I stated that knowing when the level was roughly deleted was important to figure out, since it gives us a proper estimate. If someone happened to back up the game who had recently played RG, this meant that this player had RG as a titanium backup. The time period we would very much prefer to receive a backup from is between the 7th of April to 21st of May 2014. The idea almost seemed too good to be true, so me and others decided to try and reach out to all players who had shown themselves to be using the app. And incredibly, the first player I actually managed to reach out to regarding the app was Arco himself, the host of the Elements series who 100% played RG when it came out. So I had a word with him and I asked him about the Titanium Backup app, trying to see if he still had his old phone and backups. And even though his images of him using this app was over 8 years ago, he still had them. He had backups of the game, plus his save files from 2014. This is it! We're going to find the level and be able to see it with our own eyes. Look! There they are! Arco gave me his backups, all of them from 2014. This is incredible! Look, Arco even has his old phone he played RG on, which if you needed more proof that the level used Time Machine, there you have it. He has it still downloaded on his phone, we can just ask Arco to play the level, send us the images of what he's playing, and we can finally solve this mystery once and for- Ah, it wasn't in the top 20 most recently played levels on his phone. Well, I suppose that is understandable, but surely the titanium backups will be where we could finally find this level and how it looked like once and for all. With multiple backups too, there's a bigger chance that... Oh.
The earliest backups are from October and November 2014, a few months after RG was confirmed deleted. I mean, could anything else be expected differently at this point? But okay, now since I glossed over a statement here, let me go back a little. Why did it matter that RG was in the top 20 most recently played levels? Well, you see, as I said earlier in the video, the local levels folder will keep downloaded levels on your account for you, but to a certain extent. By default, the 20 most recently downloaded levels will stay on the mobile device locally, but as soon as a downloaded level is out of this top 20, that local backup of the level itself is immediately gone to save space. Perfectly understandable in terms of game development, but absolutely unbearable for trying to find this godforsaken level. This one really hurts. We had a brilliant idea on how to actually find this garbage level, and here we are back at square one again. We've tried to ask others as well about the backups, but unfortunately for most of them, it is just too late. Most people got rid of their backups in old mobile devices years ago, and that is perfectly understandable. I got rid of my old phone I used in 2014 years ago, so why would this be any different? This left us empty-handed again, and perhaps there's someone out there with a titanium backup containing a save file, but it is somewhat doubtful at this rate. We've asked other users who we knew used the app back in the day, but from the making of this script and video, it has only concluded in two other results. Number one, the player in question was impossible to contact or under certain circumstances unreachable, despite us knowing their whereabouts. And number two, we have either missed the ability of accessing their backups by a few years or at worst, a few months before this video was made. But the actual reality of the situation here means that potentially, the level could still today be stored somewhere out there on an external device. As I mentioned previously, the titanium backup backs up your system and user applications along with their data, on external storage of your choice your choice. This application allows you to choose where you store these files. While most people definitely just store them locally on their phone, the option to store them elsewhere was also possible. The application allowed you to store these files to programs like Dropbox and Google Drive, which for anyone who has used a computer in the last 10 years will know that these accounts will stay up, including their contents, even after all this time. But unfortunately, we believe the majority of GD players who use this app did not actually do this. That being said though, there's genuinely a pretty big chance that someone out there has an old GD backup just sitting on their Dropbox without really realizing it. The question is if the person that would have this is someone we even know about. There is a chance that someone out there, out of the thousand players that downloaded this garbage level when it came out, that they happened to create a titanium backup of the game with the level downloaded and readily available locally to play. But I highly doubt that this person will ever be found. And now... We have finally arrived at the point where we have mentioned every method we could to try and find the actual level. And clearly, no matter what we came up with, no matter what research method we used, we were met with a dead end every single time. So now what? Well, there was only one thing we felt could be done. Restoring the level based off images and memory. Now what does that mean, you may think? Well, it means that me and others have to dedicate ourselves to building everything from the ground up. Every image that exists of this level will be used as a reference to recreate the level as accurately as possible. For the parts that we don't have the images of, we will be asking the players who play the level what they remembered was placed where. This ended up being a process that took well over two years to get to the point where the restoration is now. As such, here's a thinned down but stupidly complicated story on what was found and built. This is going to be a step-by-step -step demonstration where we are going to be describing three separate aspects of the restoration. First is the normal restoration, which involves using images taken from back when the level still existed, such as gameplay parts, background and object colors, level descriptions and other details. Second is the theorized restoration where it is not 100% certain that what was built was in the real level, but is more a scenario of this is very likely what is there. And thirdly, the filler gameplay where unfortunately there is no clues, no foundations or any theories for what could possibly be in these sections, so some filler gameplay has been added to compensate. In total, 23% of the entire level was made through normal restoration, 66% was made through theorized restoration, and 11% was made through filler gameplay. I will discuss these aspects in order of accuracy, meaning that the normal restoration aspect will be discussed first. So as mentioned, one important aspect we needed to consider first is what we knew 100% existed in this level. We know the level name is Element111RG, we know the song is Time Machine, we have Dark X's editor image, and we have all of these images that were taken of the actual level being played in game. I will also say that I have deliberately withheld information from you all, and certain images and posts were found regarding what was in RG. They will be mentioned in this section of the video when they become relevant, but we will start off by adding all the confirmed to exist parts. That would be the first 5%, the full secret way, 
the two ship parts shown by Dark X and Super SNSD, and the ending of the level. These are 100% what was in the level. The only actual complication with rebuilding these sections was the ending, and how it was rather difficult figuring out where the level actually ended. Did it end when the song ended? Did it go on for a few more blocks? Did it perhaps end 10 seconds before the song was even finished playing? There wasn't a proper way of figuring it out it seemed, so we had to get a bit creative. We thankfully had two different references that ended up being a perfect reference point for establishing the true length of this level. Dark X's editor screenshot and Super SNSD's post Are You Lunatic? By using the BPM lines method mentioned previously in the video, we can determine exactly where in the level the shipboard shown by Dark X was meant to be. We at the time cannot figure out where it was vertically, other than knowing it wasn't on the ground. Alongside this image, we also have Super SNSD's image of him claiming he could not get further in the level than 20%. We know that Dark X's ship part comes before Super SNSD's, which helps us out immensely. If we combine the three different parts, Dark X's ship part, Super SNSD's ship part, and the final part, by determining the percentage difference between the final part and Super SNSD's ship part, it will give us the correct placement. We can also double check this by seeing if the parts at the very beginning still has the appropriate percentages based off what can be seen in progress bars. And with that, we figured out where another ship part in RG was located. There's a small chance that the ship is slightly off, but there's unfortunately no real way of finding that out. Now of course, some people might say that this was obviously what Dark X did with the ending of the level, since it is synchronized perfectly. But given what was done in Theory of Clutter, or even other transitions in RG in terms of sync, that is never a guarantee, so we wanted to be on the safe side. Lucky for us, the final part of the level was synced perfectly in relation to the two ship parts. And now, the final reference that we have of the actual level was through Bikids' Broken Auto video showcasing this ship portal and the structures. According to the video, this ship portal was 15 seconds into the level, hence it was placed approximately right after the secret way. And in terms of footage and images, this is all we have. There are no images or resources that helps us build anything specific from this point forward, or at least it seemed to be initially. One aspect that ended up being very important to get right was how the secret way was built. It actually ended up coming in handy with figuring out how long the part above was supposed to be. As shown previously, on the 11th of April 2014, the Korean user Star took a number of screenshots of the known secret way, which was very beneficial in rebuilding it. However, the secret way has some hidden details that aren't directly visible unless you're looking for them. Now, if you aren't familiar with how objects work when they go off screen, this can be somewhat controlled. You can with triggers decide how objects are meant to enter and exit off screen, and in this instance, they move in and out vertically, which reveals some pretty interesting stuff. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at the images of the Seeker Way. On this image, there are two extra details that are pretty important. On the far left, there's this very specific spike formation, which realistically would be part of the upper structure. To this day, even knowing what the gameplay above the secret way is, the intent of these spikes are really confusing, since they don't serve a purpose to anything. It is just assumed that they are there, to serve as a visual aspect. The other detail in this image is much more subtle, but can be seen at the top right of this image. There is a half spike with approximately 4 blocks below it shown by the fade in effect of the objects. So now that we know that these things existed on the upper structure, the current purpose of these is unknown. Another detail that serves a great purpose is the second last image provided of the secret way, where a very small detail can be seen on the top right. It is a corner block, with its solid corner at the bottom right, meaning that there are definitely more structures above it. This gives a motivating factor in regards to Bakitz's broken auto showcase. The image from the secret way indicating the corner block on the top right and the structures seen from Bakitz's auto can be assumed that they were connected, so that allows us to find out the likely length of this entire section above the secret way. To quickly recap, this provides us with the general level structure of the first 15 seconds plus two ship sections that were confirmed to exist in a level. The ending is still far away, so there's no point talking much about that right now. The big issue we have now, of course, is that the part above the secret way is missing. But before talking about that, I need to mention two important users that became a hugely integral part of the restoration of RG. Firstly, we have Pamke, who contributed the most to the restoration of major parts. Back when I had released the very first video showcase of RG, where I had declared that after two years of searching all that could be found were two or three different parts, Panka put a comment to this video a year later. He declared that he did remember things from the level and was willing to help out with figuring out the rest. Now of course, you may ask why would we trust the words of what one person said about what they remembered of the level. They could be telling lies for all we know. Well, the answer to why we trusted Panka at all was that we didn't. We took what Pamka said for granted and rolled with it until the first video presenting a full showcase of RG came out. 
Since my channel was big enough to be noticed by a sizable portion of the community, we assumed that if someone who had played the level would be able to remember or recognize the restored parts that Panka claimed to have remembered, we would end up with people backing up the existence of the restored sections. This was before the level was publicly known and so popular as it is today, so it wouldn't be reckless to see commenters claiming they remembered the level for the sake of publicity. And luckily, that is exactly what ended up happening. Commenters with barely any connection to Geometry Dash claiming what they remembered or thought. The next player would be the Korean player GW Sak, who was one of the few players back in 2014 who managed to get 41% on RG in practice mode. He was able to prove this by showing his account on Geometry World, and even updating one of his old posts from September 2014 with a cute, high storm, <laughs> to signify that it is indeed him. GW Sack claimed to have been inspired by RG when building some of his old levels, one of which being his level Leap of Mistrust, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. GW Sack remembered very specific and unique timings in RG as it had plentiful of them, many of which had never been seen in a rated level before. I'll be showing off these timings that he remembered when we get to them in the level. With the two users established in the story, let's keep going with restoring RG. Now we have arrived at easily the most frustrating part of the entire level to try and restore. This godforsaken section above the secret way. It was completely unfathomable to us for years on how one of the first parts in the level had been completely forgotten by absolutely everyone. But parts after this section players had an easier time remembering. For the longest time, we did not know, neither did anyone else, what was actually above the secret way, which always really confused me. How could players remember sections that came after this one, but not the part where players were first introduced to the true difficulty of this level? Towards the end of our research, it felt like an impossible task, and it felt like we had to give up completely in actually finding anything substantial. However, that was until one of the Restoration Union members, Nali, who were granted the admin role on the Geometry World forums. We actually managed to find something. As admin, they are able to look at some deleted posts and their information. Any images or videos in deleted posts are unfortunately gone forever, but comments still remain, which is what Nali managed to find. Amazingly, he found a comment from Dark X where he literally described the entire part above the secret way, which almost sounds too good to be true, but here we are. These three comments were on a now deleted post about RG, and it is unknown who made the original post. But Dark X posted three very useful comments in this post, and putting them together, the full quote read out as the following. While this was extremely helpful, it does still have vague details. The first statement is rather self-explanatory. One of the two mirror portals can be seen from the secret way. It is just a straightforward automatic section where two gravity portals catch you and send you upwards towards a quadruple spike jump. The ball part is also pretty self-explanatory. It is a fairly traditional old impossible ball section with a few frames of leeway for each timing. But what makes this section brutal is the fact that Dark X decided to be batshit insane and add a mirror portal for every single jump. For those unaware, a mirror portal flips the camera horizontally and plays through an entire animation to do so. If you put mirror portals this close to each other, it ends up being a visual mess and you cannot see where you are going in the slightest. Very garbage, but it is great progression for restoring RG. The next quote was very confusing though. Reading it at face value, Dark Egg seems to be describing six standard spike jumps with a mirror portal on top of each of them. For someone who doesn't know difficulty in this game too much, compared to everything else before this point, these jumps are a joke in comparison. It seemed really off for a level to go from being near impossible to suddenly being very easy. Something was definitely off, but with GW Sax's guidance, he was able to pinpoint us to what Dark X was referring to. Now, this is a very old school gameplay technique I'm going to be mentioning here, so I will need to give a description for how this gimmick works. These two portals are gravity portals. The yellow one reverses your gravity and the blue one brings your gravity back to normal again. Very simple stuff. However, players figured out that if you were to stack them on top of each other, you get some very interesting results. Depending on the amount of portals stacked on top of each other and what kind of gravity portal was placed last, this cluster of portals will immediately send you flying towards a specific direction. The creator Sono924 and his health series levels was the first popular instance of this gimmick being used, and he appropriately named them Sinkers. According to GW Sack, this is what Dark X was implying, and that makes much more sense, since this, much like the previous ballpark, is a disgusting idea and near impossible. Perfect for RG. 
However, there is a problem. With everything that Darkex described in his quote for the whole part, it is not quite enough to fill in for a whole section. For someone who tried to make an near impossible garbage mess, I find it hard to believe that Darkex will let you rest for two seconds of nothing, while everything else around the section was stupidly hard. There's a tiny section missing. Thankfully, this is where GW Sack comes in and speaks on what he remembers in this part. Apart from all the spammy garbage seen in this section, there is one unique timing that he remembers from this level. The timing was arranged like this. Which, yeah, I don't think you need an explanation for why this is so hard if you've played Geometry Dash before. But what is incredible here is that this makes the whole section fit. The length of all four separate parts put together fits this section perfectly. The length is just right. The first 11% of RG that is 15 seconds long, just like Bikins' automatic version would suggest. Now, if you have been particularly observant, you might end up wondering how would the player go back down towards the ship portal since the player is nowhere near it after these parts, nor are there any platforms nearby to actually reach the transition properly. How do I know that the entire part is actually upside down and that the player doesn't go down somewhere? Well, it is not confirmed how Dark X actually brought the player back into normal gravity in order to reach the ship transition, but what is confirmed is that the entire section was definitely upside down. Now, how do I know that? Because of Bikits' broken auto video. When a player beats any level in this game, the ending has a wall that the icon will transition into. Some levels, including my own, are deliberately hiding it, but by default, there is this wall at the very end of a level that can be seen. As such, the wall at the end when the kid completed the automatic version could also be seen. However, it wasn't fully on screen. It cut off at the bottom. For anyone that creates in this game, and given the fact that this game has inconsistencies in the code everywhere, this is a pretty big hint to the fact that the player fell down from above into the ship portal. This can be recreated pretty easily in this case. All we need is an orb timing that will bring the player into normal gravity and everything lines up perfectly. Admittedly, there is no real way of confirming what Dark X actually did to bring the player back down, but this will have to do. With that finally settled, the first 11% of element 111RG, ignoring potential minor mistakes, is now fully restored. As displayed by Bikinson's auto video, the next part coming up is the ship section and thankfully, we already had some of this ship gameplay. The Dark X editor screenshot and Super SNSD's image of 20% fits in perfectly here and it also showcases where the ship section end. However, the first section of the ship was, much like the previous section before it, completely unknown and forgotten. That fact seemed to suggest that the usage of mirror portals didn't stop at all and that the camera movement mess persisted which was a pretty big problem. One of the gameplay gimmicks that Pamka claimed to remember was a pretty appropriate fit for this section. A yellow orb ship timing into a vertical spike gap. But it didn't really suffice for an entire section to just create this timing over and over. It didn't feel like the Dark X style. For years, we had no idea where to actually place this, nor did we have any decent idea for what to add here because it never felt like it fit. That was until we found another Geometry World post from Majaku. In this post, he doesn't talk about RG per se, but rather makes a reference to it through a different level called Electrodynamite by Siri. In this post, Majaku was making a review of this level, showcasing a number of different parts across the level. He doesn't have too much to say about the level, but he makes a very interesting statement at the end of all the images. The most important aspect of this quote is that Majaku mentions the UFO parts are too extreme and that supposedly, it reminds him of the normal routes in RG. For reasons I will discuss later, it can be safely assumed that this part Majaku was referring to was in the first 40% of the level somewhere. As such, the only place where this statement could make sense in the level was here, as all other parts fitted where they are currently at. Combining Pamka's ship gimmick and the cluttered-like buzzsaw designs from Electrodynamite, and we end up with a part that is very likely to have existed in this level. Of course, there is no guarantee at all that this part is supposed to be specifically here, but at least, there are exterior motives for this part to exist in the first place. And by continuing the trend of adding mirror portals that constantly flip the screen horizontally like the previous part, this ship part feels like it belongs in this level. We obviously would have hoped for an image or something more accurate and useful, like a Dark X quote that actually described how the part looked like, but we take what we can get. With this new section combined with Dark X and Super SNSD showcase parts, we have yet another section of the level complete, with the first 20% of RG very likely fully restored. Before moving on, we can make one final use of the image at 20% by, once more, looking at details that are almost off screen. If you remember the secret way images and how we could see very tiny details on the left and right side of the screen, there's a similar situation here. 
On the top left of this image, we can see a cluster of objects with two of them being differently sized spikes. A creator can control how objects are defayed in and out of the screen, and at this point in the level, Dark Age decided to change it, and now they enter the screen differently on the horizontal axis, making the objects overlap for a brief moment. As such, this now becomes much more complicated in figuring out what kind of jump this is. However, we are still able to tell how far away from the player they are by looking at the opacity of the object textures. Some of them are more transparent than the others, since they aren't fully on screen yet, and the opacity of these objects are influenced by their distance from the player. Following these rules, we can establish the actual placement of these cluttered objects is this. The only way this design made any sense to me was if it was created into a timing like this. It is both difficult and unique, very fitting for a difficult Dark X level. Given what Pamka claimed to have remembered from this point forward, the quad represented by this timing makes perfect sense. Okay, so from this point forward, it is going to be very difficult talking about any of the other restored parts, since majority of them don't really have a 100% accurate foundation as to why they have been designed the way they are. Out of the remaining parts in this, there's only two sections that come from a publicly available source. As such, we will now jump around in the level a bit, starting off at the section at 28%. Combining every other memorized section, this ball timing is pretty much confirmed to be in the real level somewhere. Now how do we know this? According to GW Sack, he stated that he was inspired by some of RG's gameplay setups, and used one of the ball gimmicks in his own level, Leap of Mistrust, which can be seen at the beginning. Upon looking at this part, an experienced player would know that in today's version of the game, this timing is free, since the ball game mode was changed in the updates that were to come. In the earlier updates, the ball worked very similar to the cube. If the ball hit a ceiling, it would much like the cube instantly die. When taking that into account, this turns the part into a ball timing where the goal is to avoid the ceiling. But in today's version, the ball will simply bounce off. With all the years of experience that I have seen of players and creators attempting to fake information, let's just say that I can tell that this is a legitimate source. I know that in short, that means I'm saying, trust me this is real, but given that this is a timing that I have never seen in any level before it, it matches the creative approach that Dark X had, plus the intended timing was broken in the current update of the game, which most fakers aren't going to consider when building. I know for some out there that probably will not be enough, but it goes to show how desperate this restoration project has become. The final section that I would like to give a mention came from one of us having an idea for researching on Geometry World. Given that this forum is Korean oriented, perhaps some users felt the need to describe the level with the Korean name for Rowan Genum, and thankfully, putting Rowan Genum into Google Translate brings with it an official translation, which reads out like this. Putting this into the search bar of Geometry World, five different posts shows up, one of which is the post where Arco exclaims that he managed to get 6%, going back to that Dark X discussion about the Ultimate Level 3 and the Ultimate Time again. But what is particularly curious is that there's one post months after RG was already confirmed gone. This post was made by none other than GW Sack himself, evidenced by the English comment added years later once I started speaking to him. Translating the title of this post reveals that it says Rowan's Genome Pattern, and what we are greeted with is one of the most disgusting gimmicks for a ship part that I have ever seen in over 8 years of actively playing this game. For experienced players, yes, this is a mini ship, so you know fully well how awful this is, but in case you're not, let me give you a bit of an explanation why this is so awful. In the 1.6 update released a few weeks prior to RG's original release, the game introduced something called breakable blocks. These are, as the name implies, blocks that the player can break. But dependent on the game mode, they function differently. With a standard cube game mode, the player can jump into them and break them upon impact, but they cannot be broken when gliding on top of them. When reversing gravity, this obviously works identically, but the other game modes that existed at the time, the ship, ball, and UFO game mode, were not able to do this. In fact, they are only able to destroy the blocks that are directly in front of them on the same horizontal level. Trying to jump or go any vertical direction with these blocks surrounding them is impossible. It has to be aimed correctly before you start breaking these blocks. With that in mind, and we look back at this disgusting gimmick once more, this demands you to hit two blocks at the same time with a mini ship six times in a row, whilst also making it through an already tight spike gap. The hitbox for pulling this off is so insanely tight that the idea of even doing this today on a PC is ridiculous. To our knowledge, there is seemingly no player in the entire world that ever managed to beat the unnerved version of this level in practice mode, which always came across as weird, but if this gimmick existed in the level, it suddenly explains why. 
with other old impossible levels that were rated at the time, like Silent Club and Unnerved Stereo Demonness, players managed to beat at least in practice mode through sheer dedication. The furthest we saw players reach on RG in the Korean forums was specifically 41%. Two players managed to do this, to our knowledge, GW Sack and Integral. It always seems odd to see two players end at the exact same percentage in practice mode, but it wasn't until we saw in GW Sack's post that it all became clear. This is to this day the most brutal ship gimmick I have ever witnessed that is both unique and brutally challenging. And in relation to RG as a full level, a scary detail to this is that according to GW Sack, who still remembered that this section was placed at 41%, said that even after this part of the ship, the end of the ship part was not in sight. As such, it is assumed that Dark X was such an evil creator that he added yet another one of these ship gaps right afterwards. It is without a doubt the hardest ship part in the entire level. Okay, from this point forward, I'm not going to be keeping you here for much longer because not only is this video way too long, but majority of parts coming up now are very theoretical. The remainder of all the parts in this level are heavily influenced by the memory of other players, mainly Pamka. And while even that has reasons and foundations as to why they are there, it would feel very redundant talking about parts that don't really have proper confirmation to be there. So instead, I will provide with a list of descriptions for each memorized section, along with an explanation for why they are there. When we requested Pamka to rebuild the level based off his memory, we didn't show him anything of what we thought was in the level to make extra sure our theories didn't get in the way of his memory. What came out of it was a big number of different gimmicks or uniquely designed parts. As mentioned previously, the final result of RG's theoretical restoration was that 23% of the entire level is confirmed to exist. Majority of the other sections are a combination of parts that theoretically would exist in the level or are fillers for sections where we have no idea what gameplay was actually built there. A compiled list of descriptions for all the theoretical parts is shown as the following. And here we are, the end of the story about Elements 111RG, and the final conclusion in trying to find the level. I've kept you here long enough, so I will make this brief while showcasing the fully restored version of Elements 111RG. This is just me writing on a whim, not really caring about how it is phrased anymore, and this is just me speaking my mind. A massive, massive shout out to all the Korean people that I have reached out to in order to gather information or translate the ridiculous amount of posts and threads that I needed. It couldn't have been possible to get this level of detail without them. I wanted to list them all, but genuinely, there are just so many to list, and I've unfortunately lost track of some of them. So I'm genuinely just going to thank the entire Korean Geometry Dash community for all the help you've given me. And massive, massive thank you to the Restoration Union group for all the absolutely insane level of research they put into this subject. Some of these findings are to this incredible and the story would not be this complete without them i owe them a lot with that i am headed out and this will be my final video for the year i am stormfly and thank you all so much for watching and thank you for all the opportunities you've given me all of these years one way or another i will see you all next year and in the next video peace